right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by John Briggs, who is in Utah. How are you doing, John? Good. Excellent. John's the founder and CEO of Insight Tax and Accounting. Uh, he's worked with co uh, Corporate Taxes Trust in Orange County, Deloitte and Touche, etc. And uh, now you have Insight uh, Tax and Accounting. What we wanted to talk today about was sales KPIs. Uh, so, um, so John, when you, um, uh, with your own sales organization, right, um, a lot of times people get bogged down in KPIs because there's a lot of data and there's a lot of information you can gather. But the important thing is what's the, what data is relevant uh, and what data is actionable. So when it comes to KPIs, often the challenge is to have enough KPIs, but not so many that they become worthless. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's certainly no end of data, especially nowadays with uh, all the algorithms and softwares and spiders and things that can gather. So for sure. Um, what we have found is anywhere from three to seven is a really good number of KPIs mm -hmm. that one should focus on. And depending on how big your organization is, each department could have three to seven, but each person should only be looking at that number. So maybe if, if you're in a president or owner role, you're getting one important KPI from each division mm -hmm. versus, uh, you know, 160. <laughs> right. And I think one of the, one of the challenging things is that a lot, a lot of people focus on and are very good at collecting uh, lagging indicators, right? Lagging and perform, key performance indicators, which are, which are, important um, because they allow you see you know what happened and all of that however you can't influence them you can't do anything about them so leading indicators are are something that are more dynamic and things that you can actually impact and course correct from etc so what are some of the most important uh, both lagging and and then leading indicators that that you particularly look at um well from a lagging indi indicator standpoint Revenue is a lagging indicator mm -hmm. yeah. um, and that's good, but net income or like profit, that's a better lagging indicator to focus on. Uh, but ultimately, honestly, other than those, I like leading indicators. In fact, mm. uh, KPI, normally people think it stands for key performance indicators. I'd rather people switch their thought and think of them as key predictive indicators. Mm -hmm. Like let's just, let's mainly focus on the ones that we know will end up predicting what the profit could become or what the revenue coming in may mm -hmm. become. Um, so that's lagging. Uh, leading indicators, man, there, there are a lot. And what I love about KPIs is that you can pick three to seven now and you can change them whenever you want. Like what is the initiative of your company right now? Those are the key performance, key predictive indicators that you should be focusing on. Certainly in a lot of those cases, something like number of leads coming in, sales calls that are actually happening with those leads, how many are actually converting, those types of things are normally pretty relevant regardless of where your company is at. Um, so we really like those as leading indicators. Yeah, because basically, if you have done your analysis and research, you will know, um, as you were saying there, you will know the, on average, the, the amount of calls you need, the amount of leads you need, the conversion rates and all of that. So you can certainly look at those and you can adjust on the on the fly, uh, which allows you to Im impact the future. Um, but again, I, like I said, I think unfortunately people focus a lot on on, on lagging indicators. But leading indicators is where sales managers should really be focused their time because this is where they are um, really reinforcing the correct behaviors. Totally. Um, and that what you said is super critical. When you have a KPI and you're tracking it, you actually want to make sure you ask yourself, is this the base behavior that I'm talking about? Because you could track closed deals. Yeah. You could track that. But the truth is that closed deal happened because a meeting was had, some sort of sales meeting had, and that sales meeting happened because some sort of lead happened. 
And so you want to take your KPI to the base behavior and, and focus on that, knowing that the other stuff falls into place afterwards. Yeah. And these don't have to be, and, the, and, these, uh, and these leading indicators, I, sometimes people think, oh, they must be pretty complicated. But no, actually, they're, they're very, very simple. Uh, one that, uh, and a former business that we used to use, um, especially when we trained sales, sales teams, was call planning. Call planning, if you could, if you started to look at uh, whether salespeople did proper pre-call planning, you know, if you used, um, you know, call planning sheets or whatever, but there was a direct, um, there was a direct relation between those who did proper call planning and the outcome of deals. Yeah, and what's beautiful about that is that um, you can then track those who aren't doing it yeah. and you can see this you know, conversion rate's much higher if you actually sit down and pre-plan your meals or your meals, your calls. Yeah, yeah. Therefore, uh, yeah, let's track that and make sure all of our sales organizations are doing these. Yeah, the, which is what the KPI is designed to do. It helps you shape behavior and push the right initiatives. Yeah, and I think that's an important point that you just raised there because uh, if you, it's one thing setting up the KPIs, it's another thing actually and tracking them and you can track them and then you can look at them and say, oh great, now I have some data to look at or you can look at them and say, okay, what do I need to do here? What action do I need to take? So I think that's the other important thing is sometimes people think it's just data and reporting, but it's not, it's all, everything has to be actionable. Yeah, and you also bring up a good point. You want to make sure you balance the burden of getting the KPI to the benefit of it. So something like using a call planning sheet is actually pretty easy to track. You would just have your sales reps turn in these sheets to an admin team member and they can count it up at the end of the day. So you're not adding a ton of time. But there might be other KPIs that you're looking at that are going to require getting input from four or five different things. And, and now, like, you, you want to definitely balance, though, because some KPIs might give some good information, but the cost might not be worth it. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's the important point there is looking at is how important is this piece of data? Is it going to is it going to help us like uh, to be more um, to be more uh, efficient? Is this going to help us close more business? Whatever is it worth gathering? If it's a nice to have piece of information or an interesting piece of information, but it requires um, effort on behalf of the salespeople to generate for it, then you have to ask yourself: Is it really worth it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and unfortunately, uh, you know, the more and more you know systems get uh, get more advanced, the easier and easier it is to collect lots of data. And we heard we've heard for years about the whole concept of big data, but at the end of the day, it's, uh, when you're managing a, a sales team, it really comes down to very small and explicit pieces of data that are are really critical. Yeah, and I actually found for our clients at least the ones that move the needle the most are usually not super difficult to gather. Mm -hmm. And so I, there's no need to get too complicated when you're trying yes. to come up with KPIs. Don't let this giant elephant of this, like let someone get in the way. It's, it's not as complicated as it may seem like if you haven't started the journey yet. And I guess the other part, the other really important part is that you explain to, in this case, the sales team, how, why the why you chose these KPIs? Why they're important, and then they can track them themselves. Because I mean, why is it just something that you know, you go around and track all of it? I mean, they should, and then they go, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, I, don't, I didn't realize I was behind on that. People should be tracking the KPIs that are important to their um, executives. Yeah, and if if you have the way to track or tie for them the KPIs to their compensation. Mm -hmm. or their other whys that may exist within them, uh, you're going to find that they become self-motivated and self-led with those KPIs, then it becomes a lot easier. Um, it also obviously helps for them to understand, like, look, we're going to track this data. We think it's going to result. We think if you do your call planning, that your conversion rate is going to increase. If the data doesn't support that after a month, we'll stop yeah. tracking it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, no, I think that's really important as well. Is that uh, is that to show the results of when when whatever you're tracking that if it's tracking in the right way that it has X result. If it's tracking in the right, is it tracking in the wrong way then it has Y result, and show it to them and say, okay, this is why this is important. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what are some of the things that you look at with its sales team? I mean, there's the core KPIs, but then there are things that sometimes you look at at individuals within that sales group. You know, there are things that maybe you look at for your door openers that you look at different things for your closers, your farmers versus your hunters, that kind of thing. Yeah, so a few, we like looking at conversion rate um, mm -hmm. because those who have lower than acceptable conversion rate or those who have high, we can gather like, what are you doing on the call right. differently than George? Um, we also like tracking individual, like for us, our leads come in on different channels. And so it's good for us to see like maybe Tyson, for example, closes leads from Facebook a lot better than Nate, but Nate mm -hmm. closes leads from Google searches way better. And so having that data also helps us um, you know, get them in the scenario that's most efficient for their sales, which obviously benefits the company and, and the owners as well. Yeah, and that's a really important point as well, is that that allows you then to focus people on their core strengths, because there's always this crazy um, tendency to focus on people's weaknesses and try and fix those. You know, let's, oh, let's focus on those. Instead of going, as you said, if one, one person is fantastic with Google, like why not like just help them to be even more fantastic at Google as opposed to say, okay, you're doing great at Google, John, but listen, I need you to get, I need you to step up on Facebook. It makes no sense. No, exactly. <laughs> um, I actually read a book in college called The Extraordinary Leader. Mm -hmm. um, it talked about that exact principle. They actually did a study that showed those leaders that leaned more into their strengths and stopped worrying about their weaknesses ended up being more productive and effective leaders. Yeah, and I, I would say, and and more, and probably happier with what they're doing, and more feeling more fulfilled right. because you know who who wants to be focused on something that you're no good at? You want to be focused on something that you're good at. So it really does, and I think nowadays. Uh, it's so much easier to focus people in specific areas because there are so many different channels, as you said. Yeah, exactly. And to find to find the right one for the for the right person. Yeah, we all have different strengths, right? And based on people's personality, someone someone might be an extrovert, but maybe not in every situation. Uh, again, someone may understand, like Tyson may understand the Facebook clients just so much better. Mm -hmm somehow the Nate and like that gives him the leg up. Why, why waste energy trying to get him to be better at something that he already kind of sucks at and it doesn't enjoy yeah. doing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And therefore, uh, you know, the KPIs for the team, then you might have, you know, it drilled down to KPIs for individuals. For instance, you may set KPIs for, for Google for one person, you may set KPIs for you know somebody else for Facebook because those are the ones that they're good at and they're producing results. So you want to put stretch goals in there. Yeah, and that also, I was thinking one of the other KPIs that we've looked at in the past, which for us, based on our phone system is easy to gather. If this information mm -hmm. were not easy to gather, I wouldn't look at it. But yeah. we looked at average time, like how long is each phone call? Uh, and some are taking way longer than others, but you know, we could look at it and say, well, this guy is taking twice as long, but his conversion rate is double. Yeah. So if you look at revenue brought in, it's like, you know what, maybe we need to move everybody to a longer sales call because the data is supporting that or vice versa. The data could end up showing, look, you're not any more successful in your hour phone call than he is in his 15 minute phone call. Yeah. Let's, let you get more volume, which will increase revenue. So uh, that was another KPI that we've looked at in the past. Yeah, which is a which is a great one too, because sometimes you come across these scenarios where somebody is is spending as much, if not longer, on less valuable deals than they are big ones. Because sometimes, um, um, sometimes the small deals take a ton of time and resources, and than the bigger ones do. And you have to then be smart with your people and say, say, okay. I get it, but you can't spend that much time with these because the economics don't work. 
Well, and then the added thing, uh, if it's that much harder to close a smaller client, mm -hmm. uh, they likely are, are going to be a bit of a problem when you actually start providing the service or whatever you sold them right. as well. Like we have right. to, we have to pay attention to these red flags that con consumers are telling us. They're telling us exactly who they are. Let's not ignore them if we're not happy with what they're telling us. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because um, there you go. Uh, there is a knock-on effect uh, to this, you know, generally speaking. And it's also a good, it's a good um, lesson then for for salespeople themselves to be more analytical about how where they allocate their time and what the you know economic return is on that. Yeah. Yeah, because I think it's really important that people take, a, you know, take a little bit more ownership themselves and, and realize these things. That's why I think having the, the sales KPIs for the team, but then having KPIs at an individual level is very, very important as well. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe even sort of saying to individual salespeople, say, how do you measure yourself? I mean, how many managers sit down with their salespeople and say, listen, here's what I'm going to measure. What do you measure? Yeah, you'd probably get a lot of insight and potentially some really good KPIs mm -hmm. you could bring up to other team members. But like to know how they're measuring themselves tells you a lot about them as as your team member as well. Like are are they A player thinking or are they not? Yeah, yeah, because I mean if somebody just turns around and says, Well, I just track according, you know, I'm just tracking my my quote, my performance against my quota, you go, there you go. Great lagging indicator though. What yeah. are you what are you what are you tracking that's going to tell you that you're going to make up the rest of it? Yeah, uh, and yeah, exactly. And if, if I had a salesperson say like, I'm just interested in hitting my quota, it's like <laughs> you have no self-motivation, you don't have any desire for bigger growth. Like if if our sales yeah. commission is set up in a way that's basically unlimited income, like what? Yeah. Yeah. And that's and that's why I think um, I mean just on a on an aside, I mean I think that's why commission structures should always be set up that way. I think it they should be set up such a way that they're accelerating to accelerate and that you know if you're on a say if you're on a calendar fiscal year, if you're doing well as a salesperson, you should be hitting your top tiers towards the end of the year. So you should want to be closing ten times the amount of business. You should be so motivated. Yeah, totally. And I, I actually, one of my struggles with quotas in general, especially as a KPI, is it does lead to bad behavior from your sales reps. You could get the guys who's just willing to go through the motion, or you could end up pushing a high performer to the point because, oh, you got to raise your quota. Well, why? Because mm -hmm. that's how we always do it. And now you've pushed him to the point of burnout, even though he's still making 10, 15 times what you pay him. Mm -hmm. Like let, let's look at a return on sales rep as a KPI, as opposed to a set number of sales. Yeah. And, and I, I really agree with that because I think there is a lot of organizations and I've seen it firsthand in the past where you go, Oh, well done, John, you made your, you made your quota in 2020. So um, I'm upping it 15% for 2021. And you're like, and, and 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 I don't give you any explanation apart from the fact that it seems like a good bump up to me. Um, it doesn't. You still got the same territory. Maybe you still got the same customers. You know, maybe the market conditions you know haven't changed at all. But I'm just arbitrarily giving you a a quote increase. Yeah, based on nothing. Yeah, ex exactly. And that's why I think uh, to your point, I think, you know, you need to, you know, look at the return from that individual. And then you need to sort of sit down and do a business plan really with them and just say, you know, what are the, what are they, what are they capable of and put a bit of a stretch in there, but don't be lazy and just do the, oh, I'm just going to 15% sounds good. What do you think? 15%? Yeah. 20%? No, yeah. Maybe, I just think 15 you'll have so much better comp. Like if you just have a conversation with them mm -hmm. and good job hitting your quota, like, Awesome. What do you think you can do next year? What are you excited about? And yeah. if you hit that, what do you think would be a fair compensation for that extra stretch? And then you know in your head, like, okay, mathematically, financially, I can afford that ROI. He just set his own internal motivation. Yeah. That team member is going to perform so much better than someone who just say, yeah, it's 15% more uh, just because that seemed like a good number today. Yeah, because I mean, I've seen people go in and get their, you know, get their new quota number, you know, sales people come in and they just go come out kind of rolling their eyes and, and there's no motivation in that. It's just like, oh, whatever, I'll 
yeah. give it a shot. Um, but to your point, if you sit down and have a, and if you allow, if you co-opt them and allow them to be part of that process, then you're, you've got, uh, it's, it's going to be a lot easier for you to set the KPIs. And it's also going to be a great, pro a great opportunity for them to set their own KPIs and for you to know what they are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Hey, uh, listen, John, this has been great. Um, all of John's information is going to be in the contributor bio below here. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself, what you do, and why you're wearing that sweater. <laughs> well, uh, I am wearing an ugly Christmas sweater. Um, <laughs> thanks to my company and our culture, I have five of these now. And this is the only wow. time during the year that I can wear ugly sweaters uh, and not get too many weird looks. Um, mm -hmm. my fur, I have a tax and accounting firm. We, uh, we just think the government kind of sucks at spending everybody's money. And so our goal is to help owners keep as much of their hard earned money in their pockets as possible by reducing taxes, but also focusing on growing the wealth. Cause sometimes it doesn't make sense. Um, some tax strategies don't make sense because all it does is just save you taxes, but it doesn't help you grow your wealth. So we, we like to do that. Um, been running my firm now for, you know, more than 10 years and it's just been a great ride is from an accounting standpoint, like we sell so and market so much better than other accounting firms. It's insane. I just can't find good accounts fast enough. Wow. That's fantastic. And listen, it's great to hear, you know, success stories as particularly, you know, given the challenges of this year. And I think also, um, it's a noble, it's a noble undertaking to help people keep more of their hard-earned money, grow their own wealth, and be self-sufficient as opposed to, as you know, shut them down and make them dependent. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, listen. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine Pipeliner CRM. Thanks, John, for today, and I will see all of you for another interview really soon. Thank you. <laughs>